Okay, today I'm going to be showing you a bet that you can win every single time. So I have here a setup where I have two different balloons. They're the same type of balloon, only different colors. One balloon has more air than the other one. And I have it twisted off here. So the bet is when I release this twist here and let the pressures equalize, will the volume of the green balloon go up, down, or stay the same? So you tell the person if they get it right, then you give them $20. But if they get it wrong, then they give you $20. And I'm gonna be showing you how to win this bet every single time. And it's not due to doing any trick, but it's due to science. Okay, so in order to understand what's going on here, we have to first understand what's going on with the pressure inside of a balloon when we blow it up. So I used to naively think that when you blow air into a balloon, the pressure just increases. But that's not true at all. What actually happens is a lot more complicated, and I'm gonna show you what happens. So I made a tiny little pressure sensing device that I'm going to stick in the balloon as I blow it up, and then I wrote a little program that graphs the pressure versus time as I blow up the balloon. So we'll be able to see what happens to the pressure in the balloon as I blow it up. Let's check it out. Okay, so I have my tube here. This tube connected to a pressure sensor connected to my computer and I'm gonna stick it inside the balloon here. So it's going to be measuring the pressure as I blow it up. And it's going to plot it here. The y-axis here is the pressure in pounds per square inch. So let's see what happens as I blow up the balloon. Okay, here we go. So this should be really weird to you. So as I initially blew up the balloon, it jumped up in pressure. But then as I continued to blow it up, the pressure actually decreased. And it kept decreasing and kept decreasing even though the volume of the balloon increased. So here's the really interesting question. When I release the air in the balloon, do you think the pressure will go backwards and increase and then decrease? Or what will happen? So let's check it out. Three, two, one. As I let the air go out, it's not like it reversed this curve and went back down and then went back up and then back to zero. It just dropped to zero. So if that's not weird to you, let me explain it in a different way because it should sound weird. What I'm telling you is that the balloon remembers whether it was being blown up or deflated. So for example, if I ask you which balloon has a greater pressure, you actually can't tell me the right answer unless you know whether I was increasing the air in here or decreasing the air in here when I ask you that question. So it's like this balloon remembers whether you were blowing it up or you were letting the air out when it got to this volume. And that means that the balloon actually has a memory of what you were doing before you took the pressure measurement inside of the balloon. And when a material has a memory like that, it's called hysteresis. So rubber exhibits elastic hysteresis. Let me explain what that means. So for example, I have here a latex band and a bucket here. And I'm gonna put weights in the bucket. Okay, so with no weights in it, it comes to about here. With one weight in it, it comes to here. With two weights in it, it, com it comes to right here. And with three weights in it, it comes to right here. So now you would guess that when I take each weight out, it should go back to each position it was in when I put the water bottles there. But let's see if that happens. Now, back to two water bottles. You can see that it's slightly longer than it was before. And again, with one water bottle, it's also slightly longer. take it back to its original position. So this is called elastic hysteresis. And what that means is the material has a memory of what happened before. So in terms of energy, more energy was required during the loading than the unloading. And this excess energy is dissipated as heat. 
And what does all this mean? It means that you can win the bet every single time when the person answers what they think will happen to the green balloon. Okay, for example, let's say that the person thinks that the green balloon will stay the same. Then what you do is just blow up the green balloon to about right here. And then because we are blowing it up, we know that the pressure is actually greater in this balloon than in this balloon. So that when we release it, it should push the air from the green balloon into the red balloon, like this. Let's release it. And that's exactly what happened. But on the other hand, if the person says that they think the green balloon will decrease in size, then all you do is blow up the green balloon. And then lit out the air. Until it gets to the same size as before. Now when you release the red balloon, we know that the pressure in here is low, about the same pressure as the big red balloon here. And nothing happens. Then if the person said that they think the green balloon will actually increase in size, well they're wrong either way so you still get your money. And then here's what happens if you keep blowing up the balloon. So the first part of this curve can actually be well defined and is very easily described using stress-strain relationships. The ideal curve looks exactly like this. So as you continue to add air and the volume increases, the pressure reaches a peak but then continues to decrease as the radius increases. But as we continue to add air, the latex rubber actually reaches its limits and stops being as stretchy as it was before. So it no longer is elastic and it starts to become rigid. At that point, as we continue to add air, the volume doesn't increase and so the pressure has to increase. So with each breath here, you can see it goes up and up and up until the pressure increases. So before I end, I wanted to talk about where I got the idea for this video. So the idea for this video stemmed from a conversation I was having with somebody on my Action Lab Facebook page. And we were talking about buoyancy and air of balloons and talking about what the pressure in an actual balloon is. And he mentioned the fact that as you increase the air inside of a balloon, the pressure actually decreases. But that got me thinking that the pressure might decrease, but there has to be a maximum and then probably a decrease and then it probably increases. And so that made me want to actually measure the pressure in the balloon. And when I finally did measure the pressure in the balloon, it turns out that's exactly what happens. The pressure increases, it decreases, and then as the balloon gets bigger and bigger and tighter and tighter, the pressure goes up again. But the really interesting part that threw me for a loop and really surprised me was that when I lit out the air of the balloon, it didn't just retrace what happened, but it actually just dropped off. So for a normal person, they can just let that go. But for me, I couldn't just let it go. I had to think about why did that happen? That meant that the process of blowing up a balloon wasn't reversible. And doing some more research, that's when I found that it all actually makes sense because rubber exhibits elastic hysteresis. And so it does have a memory of whether it was being blown up or deflated. So I just wanted to mention that because I actually learned a ton from doing this video. I had learned about hysteresis before, but this actually solidified what it actually means in real life. So I hope you learned something from this because I sure did. And even if you don't care about hysteresis, you can still win some bets with your friends. Thanks for watching again everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button. I just hit 500,000 subscribers yesterday. Thanks so much for all your support, I really appreciate it and I'm glad that you're learning and enjoying from my channel. And again, if you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to get to them. 
And if you have any good ideas or suggestions, let me know there also. So remember to hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet, and I'll see you next time.